Yo, yo, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy King Brady back at it again with another video. These past few weeks, there's been a lot of shows dropping and a lot of it's been about serial killers, mainly Dahmer. I did watch the show, it was very good. And I wanna say rest in peace to all the victims because it is just an extremely sad story. I was scrolling and I found a video that I thought would be pretty interesting. And it is 10 disturbing interviews with killers. Definitely expecting to see some infamous ones. Ted Bundy, maybe the Night Stalker, who knows. Let me stop stalling though. Let's get right into it. If I started murdering people, there'd be none of you left. Welcome to Watch uh -huh. Mojo. And today, we're taking a look at 10 disturbing okay. interviews with killers. You admit to being evil, Richard? We are all evil. Richard Ramirez. Some form or another. For this list, I mean, we're looking at instances that, where accused murderers chilled our bones that. with statements or body language during interviews. That's what's Did any of these huh? moments freak you out? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, John Wayne Gacy. The Netflix documentary The John Wayne Gacy Tapes Mr. did a lot to point out the notorious serial killer's sociopathic tendencies when it came to shifting blame for his accused crimes. Yeah, he was a weirdo. You're in trouble now. <laughs> Aren't you afraid sitting that close? This wasn't the first time evidence to that end has come out, however, as documented by this piece from CBS News to Chicago back in 1992. I, I, don't, see, I don't believe in hitting, hitting children. I don't believe in, in uh, spoiling a child either. My, my values are, su are crazy, such that if you crazy. give enough love to the children... You don't believe in hitting children, but you believe in killing. You think of murdering 33 kids and you say you didn't believe in hitting. Interviewer yeah, Walter Jacobson murdering. doesn't need to do much huh? talking in his encounter with Gacy, as it quickly becomes clear that the former Pogo the Clown is trying his best to present alibi after alibi for his innocence. Okay, but, but he's not one that I killed, so I don't know nothing about him. Gacy himself is composed You're for the most part, girl. although there is a moment where he demonstrates his infamous rope trick with a shoelace that echoes the methodology of his horrible crimes. And you, you just turn this, and I says, because it's a tourniquet. I said, that's the only knot I ever learned. Precisely the kind of knot okay. found on the ropes. Number nine, Ted Bundy. Shots Time Bundy. can Actually, change no, many things about a person, including how they behave while being interviewed. The Ted Bundy featured in a 1977 jailhouse interview from KUTV News appears more in line with the suave yet cold-blooded reputation Bundy had among other notorious serial killers. I love killers. the movie with you Ted Bundy, played by Zac Efron. Everything will turn out all right, that you are innocent. Do you still feel that? Yeah, more than ever. He smiles a lot during the piece and displays body language that appears relaxed and almost happy. <laughs> I'm not I mean, guilty. <laughs> bro came to peace that, with that it. Include the time I stole a comic book when I was five years old. Bundy keeps eye contact with his interview See, throughout most of it. That's how you know he's guilty because no one's bringing that up, bro. No one's talking about a comic book. Like what? Their conversation. And uh -huh. it's easy to become lulled into a false sense of security, which was exactly Ted's intention. If, if, there's, if, if someone's crazy enough and nutty enough to do something like that, I, I can't stop them. There's nothing I can do. <laughs> Look who's Fast talking. forward to the night before his execution, and we see a fearful and pensive Ted Bundy, a man seeking to shift blame for his crimes during his interview with Christian conservative Look, evangelist Helen James Dixon. Dobson. There are forces that loose in, in, in this country, particularly, again, uh, this kind of violent pornography number eight richard ramirez I don't trust the, the night stalker richard ramirez say. may be one of the most frightening serial killers of all time Actually. not only due to the brutality of his crimes but also the projected aura of what many perceive to be pure evil yes i am evil not a hundred percent but i am evil it's easy to see why during some of sure. Ramirez's more notable interviews over the years, including one conducted with author Mike Watkiss. Serial killers do on a small scale what governments do on a large one. They are a product of the times, and these are bloodthirsty times. Ramirez's somewhat I tense throw. responses to Watkiss's questioning imply a coiled rage, an anger that's also exemplified by the Night Stalker's breathing as he seems to become annoyed with Watkiss. Yeah, that's just I'll tell you what, I gave up on love and happiness a long time ago. Why? I, I don't care to explain that. Bro, so it's something about his aura just feels so uncomfortable. Even watching this, I, like I just feel weird. Like, 
the way he talks, I don't, I don't let like the, it. Let the quote stand for itself. I don't Ramirez like it. is comparatively more relaxed during a piece with Inside Edition, although that interview also hammers home the Night Stalker's obsession with Satanism, evil, and the occult. I believe in the, in the evil in human nature. This is a wicked, wicked world, and uh, in a wicked world, you, wicked people are born. Number seven, okay. Edmund Kemper. Where have I There's heard of him something before? truly bone chilling about the matter of fact way in which the co ed killer, Edmund Kemper, describes his past in the so 1981 familiar. documentary, The Killing of America. Everything went towards killing him, and I didn't. But I'm saying, wow, it's uncanny. It was almost like it was meant to be that way. And I said, wow, I've got this, got to stop. Kemper's impressive well, intellect so and well spoken bro. nature belie the brutality of a man who committed his first murder at the age of 15. And if it had been in the city, I would have been a mass murderer at age 15. I would have killed until they gunned me down. I wouldn't have been able to reason my way out of it. Where does this type of thinking come from? Killer even makes a self-referential joke to his modus operandi of picking up hitchhikers by putting on a pair of glasses What's and asking the camera whether they would get into a car with him. Now, would you get in the car with this man? Huh? Oh, he got the Dahmer shades. Kemper's oh, no. mental state comes across as perpetually active, like a bubbling pot of water about to boil over, while the documentary's exploitative narration pushes the creep factor of this one over the top. I am an American, and I killed Americans. I am a human being, and I killed human beings. Okay. And I did it in my society. Number six, just feels Jeffrey so Dahmer. There's no barely repressed rage within the demeanor of Jeffrey Dahmer as he discusses his history with... See, Dahmer's weird because he's chill about it and he admits it, but I feel like as he got towards his death, he definitely felt the guilt. Interviewer Stone Phillips. And Nothing he did is justified at all. And, uh, that's where everything went wrong. Nor are there any wild headline grabbing theatrics. Just wild, Instead, bro. Dahmer's quiet and soft spoken recounting of his horrible crimes lends the piece that much more power. The only motive that there ever was was to completely control a person, a person that I found physically attractive. Just sad. There's the power of shock as he discusses the failed there? attempts at creating, quote, living zombies with the remains of his victims. The killing wasn't, wasn't the objective. I just wanted to have the person under my complete control. There's also the power of how Dahmer's moments of shocking violence are weird, undercut bro. by the killer's regret for the decisions he made, and the futility of what seemed to be a date with infamy and destiny. It was weird. Once it happened the first time, it just seemed like uh, it had control of my life from there on in. Number five, Gary Ridgway. Okay. Gary Ridgway, AKA the Green River Killer, was one of the most prolific oh, no, no. of all American serial murderers. Oh, I whipped out prolific. My ID and with my ID would be my- Do I have to learn? I'd put my finger over my driver's license to hide my name. Ridgway was also perhaps one of the most unrepentant, a sentiment that's placed front and center during- How come every single one of these has brunette hair and glasses? I'm not one, y'all. I'm trying to tell y'all. I'm not uh, one. Picture of my son. They would know I was a probably normal person. Take, for example, one he did with FBI psychopathy profiler Mary Ellen O'Toole, where he very calmly describes how he would gain the trust of his victims. The only thing that would be better than that would be to have your son in the car with you. That that would be a, a, a incredible ruse. I'm lost. Oh, that happened once. O'Toole manages to get Ridgeway talking in depth about his past, his upbringing, and the dozens of victims attributed to the Green River Killer's rampage. Number four, Charles, Charles Manson. Okay. There has been Obviously, a wealth of interview footage him. of Charles Manson released over the years, much of which can be used as evidence for the man's often unhinged persona. Do you feel blame? Are you mad? Uh, do you feel like Wooch Kebab from Frantic? Get Frantic Booch 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 And there's the a lot of that fuck? here from this 1987 interview Is with that? a gay correspondent, Heidi Shulman. I wouldn't do anything that I felt guilty about. You don't feel guilty at all? There's no need to feel guilty. I haven't done anything I'm ashamed of. Right, so However, creepy. there's also this intent to shatter the myth of Manson as a leader. And this is aided by the visual of Manson's scattershot presence during the interview. Maybe I should have killed four or five hundred people, then I would have felt better. Then when I felt like I really offered society something. Huh? Although the occasionally violent outbursts by Manson have been well documented in this piece, it's the more soft-spoken sound bites that reveal more about the man's own admitted failures and shortcomings. 
my awareness and my consciousness is not the same as somebody that goes to school and has a mom and dad. Yeah. See, not having parents have left me in a, another Everybody has a different so Number three, Otis Tool. Oh, no. I've seen a whole, a whole city burned down. This interview with Otis Tool is the stuff of nightmares. There are a lot of reasons for this too. Not the least of out. which is Tool's explosive bursts of laughter and absolutely chilling smile. What do you prefer in life, uh, sex or fire? Or I like both. <laughs> Additionally, Damn, there's shit, the explicit Maria. nature of how Tool describes his past crimes and how he and former associate and fellow killer Henry Lee Lucas seemed to easily fellow dissociate killer? the value of human life. It's just like butchering a hog to a cow. It would be the grainy and blown out AV quality of this interview footage How only seems to like add to the feeling of grime and filth left over by Tool's gleeful it's accounts just, just and delivery. It's like the drink a cup of coffee, smoke and say it. Once you get into the habit, you do it more and more. Number two, Issei Sagawa. I don't know who this is either. I don't know who this is either. I don't know who this is either. 動物の解体の仕方とか、水の切り方とか、詳しく教えてくれました。Unlike the majority okay. of our other entries, Issei Sagawa isn't technically a serial killer. However, this interview footage from Vice is too disturbing not to make our list. Not a serial killer. Oh, shit. Sagawa's history and dark deeds are detailed in the documentary, while Issei himself describes the premeditated shooting and devouring of his classmate, René Hauptefeld, while he was living and studying in France. Sagawa's obsessions are also detailed in the piece, as well as the legal loopholes that allowed the killer to escape prison time for his actions. What? Sagawa's quiet and fragile demeanor undercuts his words, all spoken in equally hushed and inoffensive tones. It is a frankly horrifying and it's unbelievable a story. I'd rather be killed by a beautiful woman than a man. You'll be dead anyway. Before we continue, be sure to Shout subscribe to our Park. channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Yep, y'all go like, subscribe. This channel is growing. Make sure to go support. We're getting your there. Phone, you know what I'm sure saying? Make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Notifications. Flip your phone full screen. You Number can hit one. Subscribe, Eileen Warnos. This interview with Eileen Warnos on Eileen the eve of her execution is disturbing Most for a number of reasons. Most famous female I'm okay. I'm okay. God is going to be there. Jesus Christ is going to be there. All the angels and everything. For starters, there are the crimes for which Warnos was convicted, but there are also the stories Eileen tells about her treatment in prison. They had, they had the intercom on in the room, and they kept lying that it wasn't on, and they were using sonic pressure on my head since 1997. Her accusations oh. of sonic torment and food okay. tampering speak to her paranoia and mental state during this time. And then one day I didn't wash my food off and I was sick for three weeks, almost died. A state that gradually reaches Somehow a I just don't pitch trust during it. the interview. Yeah, thanks a lot. I lost my life because of it. Couldn't even get a fair trial. Warnos's face as she directly addresses the camera is chilling. Creepy and the audience eyes, can only bro. stare back into her eyes as the condemned killer saying. accuses society of, quote, railroading and, quote, sabotage. 2019, a rock's supposed to hit you anyhow. You're all going to get nuked. Do you agree with our picks? <laughs> we're in 2022. I think I'm pretty sure video. we're fine. Be sure well, that was 10 creepy interviews with serial killers, and I hope y'all enjoyed I felt really uncomfortable throughout the whole thing, especially as it went further and further. Some of these humans are just insane, and I don't know how they did what they did. Y'all stay safe out there. It's a crazy-ass world. I appreciate y'all for watching, though. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out. Wanna take it slow. Wanna keep it short, so I'ma let it blow. Riding around with drugs, I'm an evil soul. My heart's always broke, could you leave me alone? My heart's always broke, could you leave me alone?